I have a message titled, It Is Written. Right. Write down on this piece of paper. <laughs> Turn with me to Matthew chapter 4. And we're going to read a little bit of the life and story of the Messiah. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 1 is where I want to begin. And it says here that Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, after her, afterward he was hungry. A big surprise. <laughs> now, do you understand this was a physical man with blood pumping muscle? He was experiencing what a human would experience. How many here has ever come to a point where, you know, your flesh was screaming at you? And in a weak or struggling state, then what happened? Now, when the tempter came to him. Do you know the, the devil doesn't usually come to you when you're having a great day? He comes to you when circumstances have brought you down. He, he's ready to pounce on you when you're just a little bit weak. The tempter comes. Now, today, my son and I, we, during lunch, we had this half-hour philosophical discussion. <laughs> you ever have a philosophical discussion with a five-year-old? You know, trying to explain the devil and all that stuff, you know? It's not really any more complicated than what a five-year-old can understand. And sometimes if we could simplify it enough for them to understand, we'd be like, oh, I get it now. Now, verse 3 says, Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you're the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. But he answered and said, It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Well, that didn't work. The devil had another idea. Then the devil took him up to the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you're the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you. Do you like those people who like to whip the Bible out of context? I wonder where they learned that from. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. I thought, Hmm, I wonder what he's saying. So I thought I better find out what Strong's had to say about these English words. But tempting is, is really to test or to scrutinize or to entice or to discipline. And I thought, interesting. I'm trying to manipulate God into doing what I want him to do. I'm taking the word of God and saying, oh, you'll protect me so I can go do something that's intentionally wrong so I can show off God. I can prove as he exists. I can make him make me feel better. I can, oh my. Thou shall not tempt. You don't test God. Don't discipline God. You know, there was this guy, I, I read about him, and he he was the most beautiful creation. And one day he thought, you know, I'm pretty hot stuff. I think people should worship me. 
Verse 8 says, And again the devil took him up to an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. You know, this guy has had a worship issue from the very beginning. Do you understand what he's really after? He wants God to worship him. Iniquity was found inside of him, and he was immediately like lightning from heaven. Oh, my. When I am trying to get God to do what I want him to do, I'm trying to get God to bow down to me. I'm trying to discipline God into what I want him to do. It's written, don't tempt the Lord your God. Don't test the Lord your God. And sometimes we're just trying to, you know, we think, well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm proving God. Well, you're here. What more proof do you need? We can find ourselves, unfortunately, trying to play the game the devil was playing very subtly. And then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And then the devil left him. Do you understand? The enemy is trying to get you to worship someone else. And he's trying to get you to tell God what to do. Do you understand the devil had no power in the situation? He, he was the tempter. He was the, I'll trick you into screwing up your own life. I will trick you into ruining your relationship with God. I'll get you to worship something else so God can't be part of your life. I'll get you to you understand that's how he works. So if we're tempting God, if we're trying to get God to do something for us, we're trying to control God's actions. Well, God, I prayed. I did this. You should do that, God. I mean, again, it's our heart attitude. If I'm still trying to get God to do something, the reality is I don't believe he's already done it. Well, he hasn't healed me yet. You have what you believe. Bishop just, you know, I thought, you know, he's going to preach my message better than me. But, you know, he, he has the Bible too. There's no, it's free for everyone to read and understand. <sighs> Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1. Do you understand if we look and see, we may see a pattern in the devil's plan. And, you know, if I just show you the pattern of the devil, you may see it be repeated in your life, and that may give you a opportunity to, you know, not fall into the pattern. Genesis 3 and verse 1 says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made, and he said to the woman, Has God indeed said... You know it's the devil when they begin to question, did God really say? You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Now here's the reality. The devil will tell you truth, and then he'll add a little extra. And that 
little bit of extra, we believe them. And then when that doesn't line up with what the instruction of God says, I've been cleaning up rotten apples forever and I haven't died. Wait a minute. But that's not what he said. Then the serpent said to the woman, you'll not surely die for God knows that in the day that you eat it, your eyes will be opened and you'll be like God. Do you understand? The devil is trying to tempt you with what you already have. He's selling you what you already have and he's making you do the thing that will sacrifice what you already have. He's selling you something that's not his to sell. He's making you pay for it and jeopardizing what you already have. Tricky little bugger. It is written. Do you know what God has said? Because if you don't know what God has said, you will believe what the devil tells you. Because it will sound so good to the flesh. He will try to get you to put yourself above God. You know why? Because he's all alone. Because he did that. And God put a boot in his rear and said, not happening. He's looking for someone who will do the same thing. And unfortunately, explaining to my son today, a third. <laughs> How do I explain fractions of angelic beings that you can't see? Well, if you have three, that means two against one. Okay. For every bad one out there, there's two that'll kick their, his butt. You're not alone. And the enemy will come to you when you think you are. Do you understand? When did the tempter come to Jesus? It says Jesus was led by the Spirit. I'm sorry, I didn't look up which spirit, but I think it was God. But <clears throat> The tempter came after he had been with God and told his flesh to shut up for a while. How many here have come to church? I am going to, I'm going to get up in the morning and I'm going to pray and I'm going to like invite God in my life and I'm just going to, you know, and this is all Sunday at 11.55. Monday at 3 o'clock in the morning, that just, you know, I, I um, you know, things don't go well. Does, does that happen to anybody online? <laughs> we have great intentions. We, we get built up and we hear and we want to do what's right. And then life happens. You know, 40 days I've been trying to just be with God. My stomach is screaming and my flesh is telling me I'm tired and I'm hungry and I'm, it, the desert is dry. Well, in those moments, that's when the devil comes. He tempts you to try to change your situation. You know, shortcut, easy, you know, no work. Just take this rock, make it bread. Today I was, you know, I had like three different messages. I was trying to decide which one. It, if we don't work for something, guess what? We really won't have anything. Wow, 
the devil wants you to, he, he, will, he will dangle what you think is bread in front of you. And you understand, it's just a painted rock. It, it is, it is, it will look so good, and then guess what? You'll be toothless, you know? The, how many, have you ever, okay, the, the rescuers down under, right? Remember that stupid little mangy lizard from the guy that made it all the way through third grade? The mice outfooled the snake, you know? They switched the eagle eggs with rocks. And that lizard bit onto them and lost its teeth, broke its toe and its fingers and all that stuff. <laughs> Do you understand? The devil has, doesn't have any new tricks. He's playing the same dumb game he's been playing since the beginning of his career. He's got no more new moves. And he's still trying to sell you a rock. And he's getting you to pay for his retirement. <laughs> Iniquity was found in him. If you find it in you, get rid of it. Because eventually, it will rob from you what you already have. Do you understand? The devil was originally the most beautiful creation God had ever made. Somehow I think he lost that. He lost what he had because he wanted more than it was his. Jesus was tempted like the devil was. I'm going to get God to do what I want. He had to make a choice. Am I going to do what was written, or am I going to get what I want out of God? Am I going to use... See, the devil even tried to use the word, you know, then the devil said, well, see, it's written here. If you do this, this is what they have to do. Do you understand... I'm not here to try to tell God what to do. I'm not going to tell him to bless me. I'm just going to do what a blessed man does. I'm going to be someone he can bless. If I'm trying to tell God to bless me, I don't believe he wants to. If I'm trying to convince God to do good in my life, I don't believe he wants to. If I have to convince him, apparently I'm not being someone he can. And now I'm testing him and I'm disciplining him, I'm enticing him, and I'm trying to get him to do something for the wrong reason. Don't tempt the Lord your God. He's God. He will do what is just and what is right, no matter what I say or do. So that's a constant. I can trust that. I can depend on that. And if I spend all my effort trying to get him to do what I think he should do, I will never fix what I'm doing that's wrong. And I will keep his hands tied. If I'm constantly trying to tell God how to bless me, I will never be the person he can bless. I will sacrifice and give up the changes I should be making so he could bless me because I'm worried and spending my time trying to get God to bless me. A testimony. Wednesday, last Wednesday, week from a week ago I got home went to bed I preached went to bed woke up a little while later with my jaw was all swollen up and my tooth hurt and oh my goodness the dentist said 10 years ago you should have your wisdom teeth pulled out and I didn't want to do it 
So I texted on the elders of the church because it hurt too much to talk. <laughs> so I, I texted Bishop and said, hey, I'm, calling, I'm texting on the elders. Please play the prayer of faith because right now my jaw hurts. And uh, so I texted that and I got up and, you know, you don't get to take a day off when you're a dad. So you just, you know, diapers, they don't, you know, you can't put them on pause. And uh, so life happened, you know. So I had to just continue on. And, you know, you sit down to change diapers and little ones think, hey, it's time to just, you know, I got you, Dad, and climb on. And Dad didn't want to play jungle gym. Dad wanted to go to bed. And so I said, you know, can, would, would you pray for me? My jaw is hurting right now. And they, all of a sudden they just stopped. And Liam laid his hands on me and Olivia laid her hands on my jaw because we've been figuring out, you know, this is your head and this is your shoulder. And so she put her hand and they just both started praying. Both of them weren't in English, but that was okay. And, um, you know, in a couple hours, I just kept progressively feeling better throughout the day. By the end, of the wife texted me later and said, so what do you want for dinner? Soup? <laughs> said, no, I need anything you want. <laughs> it's, it, the enemy wants you to give up what you already have. What do I have? Obedience to the word of God. He's going to want me to do something different than obey. And when I do something different than obeying God, I get those results. He wants to trick you into disobeying God. And he's going to try to twist the word to get you to do it. Because here's the reality. He can't take it from you. You have to give it up. You have to sacrifice it. You have to throw it away. So if you're blaming the devil, guess what? He has been defeated. But you know what? From his prison of being thrown from the presence of God, he's trying to get you to throw away what you have. He can't take it from you. Do you understand? He's trying to bait you to give up what you have. And then we say, well, the devil made me do it. Do you understand the devil didn't make you do anything? The devil didn't force Eve. You know, the devil didn't take the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil and shove it in her mouth and move her jaw up and down. Do you understand he got her to pick it, to eat it, and share it with her husband? They all got punished. Father, we want to do what's written. And we want to be obedient to you. And so in those weak moments that we face, in those times where temptation comes, I thank you, God, that we would rely upon what you've written down, that we would know that the truth is. So when the devil brings a lie to us, he doesn't trick us into giving up what we already have. thank you, Father, that you love us enough that you would already provide and give everything that we have need of. So we choose to receive it today. I thank you, Father, that if we're finding ourselves in this dry, tempted, aggravated place, I thank you that we're not buying no rocks this week. I thank you that we'll see the lies for what they are and that we will recognize that your word will bring us through that place. Because here's the good news. Right after the devil left, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Do you understand as soon as you 
tell the devil the truth, he has to flee. And right after that, God says, now I can come into that place, whether it's dry or aggravated or a desert, and I can bring you what you need. So what are we stepping into? Signs, wonders, and miracles. They come right after you tell the devil to get out of town. And how do we tell him how to get out of town? It's written. This is what God said. I'm not telling you in the name of me. I just wanted to remind you of the guy who already kicked you out. You're not welcome here. Because apparently you've got amnesia. Father, I thank you that you're preparing us to shine your light into a dark earth. We need your presence. We need your power to accomplish that and to do that. You are a good, loving God, and we are thankful that we have you for a father in our life. I thank you that we're restoring our connection back to you where we're getting rid of all the junk that's gotten in between and we're getting right back to the original. Mm 